Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome to your next view tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the draw pass. So we're going to take a view. We're going to take a basic view and we're just going to call it you know, a text view. Make a nice big text view. Uh, no, actually we'll make it just a blank view. We don't know what it does yet. And now we're going to describe how the draw pass works. So now what's happened is the views now know exactly where they are. So let's say, assume this is at 0, 0 and 100, 100. Okay, so that's, that's our frame. Our frame is now defined. Our view now knows exactly where it needs to be on screen. So what the system now does is it breaks up the uh, screen into bitmaps or into frames. And each frame is actually just a bitmap. That's all it is. Because a bitmap represents the colors of pixels. So essentially what you've got is now your view has been called to draw and your draw me method is passed a canvas. Okay. Now the canvas and bitmap are a bit confusing, but essentially is think of the canvas as I'm sure. You, okay, I'm sure you've seen those uh, old style books you used to use in offices, where you'd write on one page and it would transfer through to the second page. That's essentially what the canvas does. The canvas is like a layer you put over the bitmap. When you draw onto the canvas, you know what I'll do. Make this a bit easier to see. I'll very quickly draw this on the page underneath, okay? So you can actually visualize what's happening. So this is our bitmap. And this is our canvas. Okay? So what happens here is I tell the canvas to draw a part. I tell the canvas to draw a rectangle filling the screen or just draw a color. So the canvas says, I'm going to draw a color. But what actually happens is it goes to the bitmap. It figures all the stuff out for you and then goes to the bitmap. Fill yourself a color underneath. And then our view underneath, the colors appear on screen to the user. And that's basically it for drawing. And the actual mathematics of the drawing is a lot of 2D mathematics, a lot of scaling, a lot of rects, a lot of stuff like that. But the drawing is down to how you want your view to draw. Where do you want to draw a circle? Where do you want to draw rectangles? Where do you want to draw lines, paths? And the basic you know, rule is make the draw as simple as possible and make it as fast as possible and minimize your allocation. So let's talk about optimizing the draw a little bit in here. So our draw, obviously figuring out the measurements of where we need to draw stuff in the draw pass is very, very, very bad. Because if you think about it, this draw pass has to occur in 15 milliseconds or less. So you have to get that in under 15 milliseconds. Ideally, and that's for one frame. That's the time in 60 frames per second. You need to do in a draw pass in one frame. That's too slow. Ideally, you want this to be under four. Your draw pass should be under four milliseconds. And it's easy enough to achieve this. Between, between four and six is a good, good call. And uh, if you get under two, it's really good. Because don't forget, if you've got 50 views, 50 by two is now 100 milliseconds of draw time. If you're animating the whole view hierarchy, your view system slows down. So let's talk about the actual how to prevent draws. It's or how to prevent allocation problems, or how to prevent slowness. First thing is never allocate an object in the draw path ever. You'll get warnings about it, just, just don't do it. So in your draw, you might need, you know, a rect, uh, a paint, which we'll get to in a second, um, you know, a paint, you might need a bitmap, to draw in, you might need a bunch of stuff. You might need, you know, bit, uh, secondary bitmaps uh, with extra canvases because you want to draw on that canvas and then transfer that bit onto the main canvas. Uh, you need to do all this crazy stuff. So what you do is there's a call back into view called on size changed, and it passes in the old width and old height. So any time a view at some point before the draw, it's guaranteed to be called before draw, but not necessarily before measure. But it only ever called when it knows its own dimensions. On size change is called, and uh, it passes in an old width and an old height, and an old uh, and a new width and new height. So you can actually compare them, figure out if the size has changed, and in here, you calculate your recs and your positions. Now, obviously, you should only do math-based calculation in here. You shouldn't do like you know loading bitmaps. In here, you should only like any bitmaps, masks, stuff like that. You need to load, load them in your uh, constructors. 
or load them in, you know, have the views get passed in with a setter or, so, or something like that. But anyway, the last thing we're going to talk about now with the draw is the paint. So we've already seen how the canvas draws and the bitmap. So we've seen how the canvas performs the draw onto our bitmap. Let's talk about the paint. So the third part of the puzzle is the paint. The paint is cool. Paint describes how things are drawn. So essentially the paint is your paintbrush. Your paint is the paintbrush on which you run over your thing. So let's say you want to draw a text. So there's a canvas dot draw text, okay? Draw a text. And you know, we know our text, it's uh, blah, 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 wobbly, wobbly, whatever we want. And then we tell it to do paint. So how it works is the paint defines the text properties. So the paint will define how the text is drawn. It defines its size, its color, its, um, its alpha. Everything is defined in the paint for the text. And that's essentially all it is. So if you want to draw a rectangle with filled with red, you tell it to draw a rectangle, you pass in a rect. The rect defines where the rect where on the canvas the rectangle should be drawn, and the paint test says fill it with red. So you tell the canvas, draw this shape using this paintbrush. And that's all there is to the draw. Uh, the real hard part about the draw is just making it more efficient and making and optimizing it, but we'll show you that in code in a few videos. But that's it guys, really, for the whole view hierarchy of Android. So going back to the start. Go back to the pages. Uh, as we've seen already, uh, the life cycle of an activity starts and it goes down through. At some point, after on resume, presumably that it's not guaranteed, the view will be asked to hierarchically draw. It'll be asked to measure, lay out, and then draw. The measure pass occurs. I'll just zoom out a little bit, guys, so you can see a bit more. So the measure pass occurs. And it figures out, it looks down the tree and asks all the views for their size. How big are you going to be? Then the layout pass occurs. And all the views are then asked, where on the screen do you want? To, where asks all the view groups, where on the screen do you want your children to be? And it figures out and positions all its children. Whether they be other view, other view groups or layout. And then of course, the draw comes along and says, okay, this is your area, this is your set of pixels to draw on. Do your drawing. And that, that's really it guys, that's all there is to it. So in the next video we're actually going to create a custom view, we're going to create a bar chart. And we're going to do some basic stuff, of figuring out, doing calculations, a bit of maths, and a few little bits like that. So anyway guys, next video will actually be code. I hope you enjoyed these few little uh, demonstrations. Let me know what you thought of me doing it on paper like this to help explain some of the concepts because I found it much easier to just in general be able to scribble down and explain and do diagrams and stuff and show you guys. But anyway guys, as always, it's been a good talk. I'll see you out there.